Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto was abandoned kid in the world of full Pokemons, movie? Kotetsu sighed for the hundredth in the last 40 minutes, really he should have seen this coming, the only time the mayor put him in guard duty wasn't because some wild Pokemon decided to trespass the town limits, or some beautiful noblewoman decided to have him as an escort. No, all of those jobs weren't meant for him, instead he was stuck here because Aoba wanted to take the day off. He scowled. He's been asking for a day off for months. And besides that there wasn't anything to guard here. It was just an entrance gate and it's not like they were going to suffer an invasion, only the bakery shop was near. But no it seemed that this specific spot was in need of his total attention, he hmmphed, if only Azuma was here too. Cough, cough, he was awakened from his thoughts by a cough, he looked around and saw, whoa. It was a pretty brunette woman in her thirties wearing a beautiful kimono, she was elegant and refined judging by her posture, and the thing that made him notice her more was that she was looking at him. He quickly tried to clear the dust from his uniform, at the same time he tried to fix his hair damn it, when was the last time I washed my shirt? Luckily for him she didn't backquote t seemed to notice any of this and started to walk slowly towards him. Man I can't believe this, it must be my lucky day. Do you need something ma backquote am, he said once he found his voice. The lady didn't backquote t answer she just leaned towards him in. Holy crap here she comes don't screw this up Kotetsu. Dash question mark dash, come on you stupid human just take the bait. Kitsu thought angrily while she tried to take the attention of the human, the plan was simple, she would distract this stupid male while Naruto took some things from the bakery. She didn't like this part but it was better than the alternative I really hope I don backquote t have to kiss him but with every second he was closer and closer until. That's it, the sign. She practically screamed in joy when she saw Naruto waving at her from a tree behind this guy, she quickly transformed and. Kotetsu. He had no idea of what was happening one second ago he was about to kiss the most beautiful woman he had seen in his life and then there was a flash of light and suddenly he was alone looking like an idiot. Before he could understand what was that he saw a Zorhua climbing on the tree past him and a childish laugh erupted from somewhere near him, that gave him goosebumps because knew that laugh far too well, from countless times he dropped buckets of paint over him, or the infinite chases over the rooftops, or that horrendous time when he took his clothes and made him look for them naked in the academy. N-A-R-U-T-O-O-O-O-O-O-O he yelled at the top of his lungs looking for the prankster. Seriously what was the professor Serutobi thinking when he brought him to the village? This is when everything changed, the end of an era and the beginning of a new one, this is the story of a hero's death and the birth of a new one. It all started in the past, when the humans discovered how to harvest the Pokemon's power by enslaving them. Until then most people were terrified of them, majestic creatures with powers that defied our understanding of the world. Some settlements of humans lived in harmony with them because they respected the natural balance, but most people feared what they couldn't understand, and usually what comes after fear is aggression. That started many conflicts between humans and Pokemon, even if they didn't want to fight they defended themselves which generated more hostility from the humans. But all changed with the advances of technology, tiny devices that could capture them and force them to fight for the humans and with that people thought that the wars were over but they were wrong. Humanity just got a better weapon. Three wars came and went, I know that the first three ninja wars happened when the nations were already established but let's just say that here they happened before, where humans weaponized Pokemon and there were a lot of casualties from both sides, after designating frontiers and countries people knew that something needed to be done. That's when the actual system was created, in order to stop the bloodshed a truce was formed between the nations and some regulations were made. In order to have Pokemon you needed a certificate of a Pokemon trainer, that was obtainable through exams and training, if you failed the test or if they detected something wrong in your evaluation then you were forbidden of having Pokemon ever, although most rich people could keep them as pets. That regulation alone reduced the amount of Pokemon owners and allowed them to evaluate every possible candidate and determine any possible threat. But that wasn't enough. There were too many tensions between the nations and most humans that were used to the war were getting bored of the peace. That's when a great philosopher came, he understood that the human nature is a constant battle. So he created an institution where people would channel their aggression in peace, where they would solve their disputes in a friendly competition, or at least that's what he had in mind, where they would regulate how many people possessed Pokemon, 
where it would be an age restriction so children won't get hurt, and where no human or Pokemon needed to die, that's right he created the Pokemon League and was coronated later as the first champion. In this particular institution, Hiruzen's Pav, Professor, someone called. Hiruzen put his pen aside and stopped writing his memories, he tore his eyes apart from his work and rubbed them, his sight was getting worse at this rate he was going to need glasses, he looked up to see Izumo in his office and behind him was Kotetsu with an angry face that he knew far too well. Asterisk sigh let me guess, Naruto. Azumo nodded and Kotetsu stepped forward. I'm sorry for barging into your office professor, but we've been knocking on your door for the past 10 minutes Kotetsu added tiredly. Hiruzen raised an eyebrow, really? Has he been that distracted with his work? He was ashamed, and to think when he was a trainer nothing slipped past him. Oh well he guessed that it was common at his age. What did he do now? He asked. He stole from the bakery said Kotetsu standing straighter and making a face that made him think he wasn't telling him the whole truth. Azumo chuckled, he also made Kotetsu kiss a Pokemon. Dude shut up, I didn't kiss it, but you wanted to. It was transformed, enough. He said before they could continue with this pointless argument alright I'm coming. He sighed again and looked at his unfinished work, he wasn't sure why he was writing the story of Pokemon battles, it was in every single history book and was common knowledge. He started writing thinking that perhaps he could write his own version with details no one knew, but for now he needed to focus on the task at hand. What's the last place he was seen? Well I followed him from the bakery but... Naruto Pav, Naruto couldn't keep himself from laughing every time he remembered Kotetsu's face. He looked so dumb with his lips stretched expecting a kiss, when Naruto saw him he was half tempted to let him kiss Kitsu just to see his reaction. Oh well that was for other time, in fact as he looked at Kitsu, who was busy stuffing her face with bread, he was sure if he asked her to do that she would bite him. He looked trough the window. They were hiding from the rain in an abandoned wooden building, most of it was burned down in a recent incident but some parts were still stable, outside the rain poured down in the streets but it was starting to stop. This street was mostly formed by houses and at this time of the day most people were working or in the school, so nobody would be near them. Actually he had a home so they didn't need to hide here, but that would be the first place they would look for him in. Well it was nice to have a roof over their heads but staying in the same place for much time gave him the itch, he supposed this was the effect of being homeless for so many years. Suddenly he heard footsteps on the rain poodles outside, when he looked he saw the two idiots and the old man. They are here he warned Kitsu. His partner gave a yelp and standed, she gave Naruto a growl that told him she was ready to do things the hard way. Nah, don't worry Kitsu the old man is with them there is nothing we can do truly that's what he thought, he could never escape from the third. Before he could gather the resolve to face them, they kicked down his door, Hiruzen appeared flanked by the other two, Kitsu started to snarl at them while Naruto stood up. It's over Naruto, don't try to run said Azumo. It's okay, Azumo, Kotetsu, leave us. But Kotetsu protested. Now, the two of them left without another word, and the former champion just stared at him. Naruto couldn't keep looking at his eyes so he faced the wall, seriously even after all this time he couldn't fathom what was in that old man's mind, he was the smarter in town, and despite having over 70, he was the only one that he wasn't able to outrun. It seemed like he anticipated every single escape route he was able to think, each time he planned a prank and he was passing by he would give him a warning look, as if he knew already, always two steps ahead. Well, asked Sarutobi, got any excuses? Naruto shook his head, not only he wasn't able to lie to him, but he didn't want to, the old man was one of the four people that liked him and Kitsu in this village, everyone else was always scowling at him for some reason. Even before he started pulling pranks it seemed that they hated him for some reason. Then why did you do it? I was hungry. Don't lie to me Naruto. I always check if the landlady gives you your lunch. Naruto scowled. That old hag always gave him the worst kind of food. He was sure she did that on purpose. He never got nothing more elaborate than a sandwich. A really spicy food that makes him stay in the bathroom for hours. He even got a rotten tomato from her once. Naruto Hiruzen's yell disrupted his thoughts I lost my patience, you are going to tell me exactly why did you do it right now, or else I will put you in toilet cleaning duty for the police academy for the rest of the week. Naruto trembled, it wouldn't be the first time he did that and it wasn't pleasant. 
Oh yes, and today is curry night Sarutobi added. Oki, okay, Oki okay, I'll be good I promise, just don't tell Aruka sensei, he will come up with something worse, Naruto begged. HMPH I'm sure of it. Oki okay, but I didn't lie about being hungry, I didn't eat lunch. Why is that? I asked the landlady and she told me she gave you lunch. Naruto didn't want to think about it, because then it would make it real, he wanted to bury it deep inside so that it wouldn't bother him anymore. But one look at Sarutobi's eyes told him that he wasn't escaping from this, so he took a deep breath and started. Some guys knocked down my food to the ground. Hum and why didn't you tell Aruka? I'm sure he would have done something the older man responded, raising his eyebrow. Because. Naruto dropped his gaze, the truth was that he was tired of relying on Aruka because I wanted to do things my own way and, they said some stuff. Like what? Stuff about my parents and how they abandoned me, he stopped mid-sentence, did they abandon me? He asked. Hiruzen. Hiruzen closed his eyes, he had dreaded this question since Naruto arrived at the village, but surprisingly two years passed and he didn't ask anything. There was a reason why the villagers hated Naruto, and it wasn't because of his pranks, oh certainly those didn't help, but the people hated him from the moment they saw his face, his scars to be more precise. Here is a narrating, with the establishment of the Pokemon League as a regular institution in all the nations there was a change in power, a new law decreed that Pokemon won't be used for war anymore. Because of that, people under the leadership of the first champion got creative and found new ways for people to work with Pokemon. They discovered that they were better at creating things than destroying them, they helped with different jobs, building, cooking, exploring, farming, even recreational activities. All of this, and the fact that the option of having one of them as a bodyguard of some sorts or as a police force was still available, increased the demand for trainers a lot. Owning a Pokemon opened so many opportunities to the people, it gave you economical stability, high demand for many jobs, fame, Pokemon trainers, and later coordinators, were basically celebrities and even political status. Since the champion was the most powerful person in the whole nation the feudal lord feared him, so in an attempt to calm him the first champion formed a pact that established the champion as the second in command, later in the times of the second he added the best trainers beside him, the elite four, together with the feudal lord, and the champion they form a council to rule the land. But it wasn't all about peace, some people were against the Pokemon because they remember the old wars, and they believed as long as humans possessed Pokemon, peace won't last. Also there was another group of people, the descendants of those who lived with harmony with the Pokemon at the beginning of time, they suffered the most because their lifestyle was torn to shreds, apart from the wars that devastated their people, their friends were enslaved. At first they protested peacefully but they retaliate with violence, their descendants grew bitter, and when the league was established they were outraged. Their friends were war slaves and now they were used as mount beasts and clowns. That was the final blow. They demanded the abolition of the Pokemon League, and the prohibition of Pokeballs, they raised violent protests all around the land, what made things worse is that wild Pokemon fought with them, since they were connected with nature it was easy for them to recruit them. One of these groups was particularly infamous for raiding villages, they wore Pokemon masks to hide their identity and to worship ancient Pokemon, they called themselves, the Tailed Beasts. Among the members of this group were nine dangerous assassins, they specialized in canine-like Pokemons and their leader was famous for using a Ninetales, so in order to thank their Pokemon for fighting with them he let them scratch his face leaving scars that resemble the fox whiskers. The rest of his gang followed his example and everyone knew them because those scars, they were known as the Nine Tails and their most infamous act, was invading Leaf Town. Hiruzen closed his eyes and tried to disperse those memories, it wouldn't help him in this situation, so he forced himself back to the present and looked at the child who was expecting an answer from him. Naruto, Hiruzen started, they abandoned me didn't they? Naruto's face was stone cold so he couldn't tell what he was thinking the other kids told me that they took a look at my face and left me to die. Naruto, the other kids have your age, there's no way that they know what happened with your parents. Their parents told them, at this point his eyes started to tear they abandoned me in that forest, you saw how bad it was before you found me, they didn't want me. Sarutobi flinched as the boy started to cry. He attempted to get closer to the kid but he stopped when Naruto started to back off towards the window, they learned in the past he was probably the fastest person in the city. Naruto you don't, 
And that's why everyone hates me. Not everyone. Why did you bring me to this stupid village? At least people didn't mind me in the other place. You are better here. Yeah right. If it's not the kids in the academy bullying me it's the guards giving me looks and shoving me around. Naruto. And if it's not them, the old people in the park are always saying mean things about me. Naruto. And don't let me start with the guys at the bakery. You wanna know why I stole from them? Last week they treated me like a monster. Naruto. And the teachers. They don't get me. They are always asking me the complicated stuff so that the whole class can laugh at me for being dumb. Naruto. At this point Sarutobi lost his patience. He knew that Naruto's life was hard, but being the champion meant having more responsibilities than taking care of him, and quite honestly he wasn't making this easier. It seems that his scream managed to surprise him, because he shut his mouth and looked at the wall. The Zorua, who was conscious of her master's distress, sprinted towards him and started to lick his hand, as if asking if he was okay. Look Hiruzen took a deep breath to calm himself I'm sorry for yelling, can I come to sit next to you? He noted and he stepped towards him, there wasn't many things to sit on in this abandoned room, but there was a bed so he sat on it and patted the suda to indicate he wanted the boy to sit next to him. Naruto walked over him and slumped over the bed in quiet sobs with the Zorhua on his lap, looking at him worried. Hiruzen took this opportunity to take a good look at the boy inside. Honestly he should have seen this coming a while ago. It's only natural for an orphan like Naruto to wonder about his parents. But he really thought that at least here he wouldn't be alone. The village was full of orphans of Naruto's age. The last war and the attack from 10 years ago killed a lot of people, that left grandparents and other family members responsible for rising an entire generation, and this city was the perfect place to do so. A rural settlement with many shops and stores away from the frontiers and near the capital so elite trainers could always come quickly in case of an emergency, besides there wasn't any gym here so the chances of encountering a dangerous trainer who wants to cause trouble were small. But this also was a bad place for Nato, everyone in the village saw the distinctive whisker marks the Nine Tails had, even before the attack they were quite notorious and had a big reputation, but they were like a legend or a tale. And now the people hated Naruto as well because of his marks, it didn't matter how many times Hiruzen tried to explain to them that Naruto had no relation with the attack, but the others were blind with rage. We need to kill him before he kills us. It's a small child. Probably he wasn't even born when the attack happened. Then how do you explain his scars? He's one of them. For the last time, only their strongest warriors get those scars, and he is just a kid. Those were probably made by an encounter with a wild Pokemon. But what if he is their son, and decided to give him those, we can't trust him. He doesn't know who his parents are. That's what he says, but what if they are out there looking for him, what if we leave them here? They argued back and forth about this until he put his foot down and took responsibility. Being the champion gave him great power with the council, so it was decided that he was going to be his guardian. He didn't legally adopt him because he was way too busy to rise a kid and his enemies might target him for that. He was hoping that some couple would want to adopt him, but there was no luck. Listen Naruto he began I know how alone you must feel I truly do, but whenever something bad like this happens you need to talk to me, instead of pulling a stunt like that. BB but, what if he stuttered between sobs wh what if you are busy, most of the times you are. Then you have to tell Aruka. Even someone as strict as he is he will probably understand. I tried, and Mitsuki told me that I would bother him. Nonsense, Uruka is very fond of you. But Mitsuki and the other kids. Okay that's enough Serutobi interrupted Naruto, you can't let anyone talk you down like that, besides it's not like you were the only one, there are a lot of kids without parents here. Naruto didn't look at him, but he stopped crying and started to pet his Pokemon, so he took it as a good sign. I need to know he said after a while where are my parents. Serutobi sighed and looked at him in the eyes. I don't know Naruto. He began there are a lot of kids like you, too many people died in the war and they left behind a lot orphans. Yes, I I know that, but why everyone hates me? You have to tell him he thought tell him, he has grown up already, if you don't, it'll be worse. There is a reason, but it's complicated. How complicated can it be? Naruto roared, losing his patience I know that I'm not good most of the time, but people hated me before I did anything. 
Naruto calm down, I'm going to explain, but only if you let me talk. Oh okay, I guess. Asterisk Sai what do you know about the tailed beast's attack? The what? Asterisk grunt Naruto I'm pretty sure they thought you that last year. Hey, I told you it's hard for me to focus in class, he defended himself. Fine I'll explain from the start, but I need you to pay attention Oki. Okay. The boy nodded and he began his story ten years ago, a group of people attacked this city with Pokemon, it was in the middle of the night and it took us all by surprise, a lot of people died that night, including my wife. I didn't know you had a wife, well now you know. But I don't understand what it has to do with me. I didn't attack them. I'm not done. Hear me out then he wondered how to explain this without giving him the wrong idea the people that attacked us called themselves the tailed beasts. Why did they do it? I'm getting to that, and stop interrupting. They attacked because they are fanatics, and hated Pokemon trainers because from their point of view we were enslaving Pokemon. But that doesn't make sense. Naruto exclaimed you told me they used Pokemon as well. The way they traded them was different. They never used them in jobs, and never forced them to battle he rubbed his temples thinking on how to address this next part but their most defining trait as a cult was their faces, you see in order to differentiate themselves from other people they let their Pokemon scratch them. Wow, yeah and those scratches left scars on their faces, inhale scars that resembled whiskers. Naruto gulped and looked at him wide-eyed. Yes. The reason why the people here doesn't like you is because they think you are one of them. Be you, but I've never heard of them. I didn't attack the city, it wasn't me. But people think that your parents might have belonged in that group. Naruto stopped rambling to look at him with wide eyes, he tried to speak but no words would come from his mouth, so he got up and started pacing around the room, breathing heavily. Naruto calm down, I know that it sounds bad but, it sounds bad, bad, no this is way worse than that. He screamed and started crying again so you are telling that after all this time my parents were criminals. And that's why everyone here hates me. Because of my scars. His breathing was becoming ragged, and he sobbed uncontrollably so they they killed a bunch of people, made everyone mad and then they left me to deal with all this shit. Hiruzen got up and went straight towards Naruto, the boy closed his eyes probably expecting a punch, but instead he grabbed his shoulders and hugged trying to calm him down. A part of him wanted to ask where did he learn that word, but he supposed that he picked up that kind of language from his old home. Afterwards he pulled out his shirt revealing his scared torso to the boy. Naruto look at this he signaled towards his scars I've got scars to see, and before you ask my parents weren't criminals he kneeled and started to wipe out tears from his face with his clothes and do you know through a lady who lives three blocks away, Mina. Naruto wasn't able to talk because of his tears but he nodded anyways. Well if you pay attention you'll see that she has one scar as well in her neck, and you know Rado the guard. He has that huge burn mark across his face you probably saw it already at this point the kid was clutching him so hard that it started to hurt him, but Sarutobi didn't care and Kotetsu obviously, or did you thought that those bandages were for just for Fajin? Ah and finally there's Aruka, you have to ask him to tell you how did he get that mark, but I think that it's better if you wait for him to calm down because I don't think he will be in the mood for a nice story once he finds out what you did in the bakery. Hiruzen heard the child's muffled laugh coming from his robe he is probably screaming at Kotetsu right now, with that big head of his, he did what? Hiruzen chuckled at that, and he saw how his Zorhua came towards them, happy to see her master doing well, ah finally, he is coming along. See Naruto. Everyone's got at least some level of injury, there's nothing wrong with that. Be you but the tailed beasts. You want to know what all of them have in common Naruto. Interrupted here is an every single person that I mentioned before got their scars from accidents with willed Pokemon the boy's eyes widened. Yes myself included, sometimes it's easy to forget that Pokemon can be deadly creatures, you know what I think. You had an encounter with a wild Pokemon when you were little way too little to remember now and that left you with those nasty scars, it's just a coincidence that they resemble the ones from that group and people from the city are being silly and superstitious. They're being super, what? Superstitious, it's when you believe in things that don't make sense, they don't have proof that you are evil, but their fear makes them think that way. HMPH, those people are stupid then, said Naruto with a grin. Probably some of them are, but please don't tell them that to their faces. He stopped hugging him and started walking towards the door. 
Oki Naruto follow me, if you are felling better we should go and apologize to the bakery. Huh? No way, Hiruzen frowned, didn't you heard me before? They were really mean to me, tried to scam me and then they kicked me out of the bakery. Do you have any proof? And then when he saw Naruto's face he added the following words quickly it's not like I don't believe you, but you need proof, that's how the law works. Of course, the other kids in my class saw it. And do you believe that the will help you? Asked Sarutobi full of doubts I don't think you are popular among them. Ha! Huh. I know of one guy that will help me. Come on Kitsu. He signaled his Pokemon to follow him with a huge grin that made him realize of who he was talking about. Oh yeah, him. XXXXX. Kitsu. Kitsu walked happily alongside Naruto. She was really glad that he was feeling better now thanks to that old male. She quickly casted a glance towards him and puffed. Honestly she still didn't like that man, even after years of living here, but he was kind with Naruto and that's all that matters to her. HMPH, I still wonder why he was crying before she thought while they passed the grass space, with a couple of trees where human pups played and climbed iron bars that were twisted in strange ways he wasn't hurt by the other humans, and he was definitely fine before they started talking. They were now searching for this male. She didn't remember his designated name but she was sure which one they were talking about. A group of humans walked by and they were so impressed by the old man that they started bowing to him. Kitsu didn't want to waste time with this so she started barking to scare them away. It's Oki okay, Kitsu Naruto told her we're almost there. Are you sure he's over here? Shout and we look in his apartment. Nah he is probably just reading a book under a tree then he proceeded to look around for the human pup hey, there he is. She turned around and saw the male in question, he was resting over a tree and he had a pile of papers in his hand, the type humans like to stare at as if it could talk to them. Yo Ren, we need your help. Yo Ren, we need your help Naruto said for a second time. The kid in question had dark hair with pale skin and glasses over his green eyes, he was dressed with jeans, military boots, and a jacket with various shades of blue. Ren was lying on the ground and he kept reading his book below a tree, he never looked up to address them, in fact the only indication that he heard them was a little grimace on his face. This brat, okay that's it, Kitsu go get him. He nodded towards his friend who sprinted towards the boy and bited his ankle. Ag fuck. Naruto I heard you the first time damn it, he screamed and wiggled his foot to get rid of the Pokemon. Then he got up ready to yell at him some more, but he stopped when he saw who was behind him L Lord third, wa what are you doing here? he said trying to cover the fact he just cursed in front of the champion. Hello Ren, I'm here because Naruto is in trouble, and like he said you can help us. In trouble again huh? Can't say I'm surprised he commented while he dusted off some grass from his clothes so what's it this time? Did you ruin Mizuki's date? Or did you try to ride the Tauros from the hot springs? Maybe you told Kitsu to transform into Sasuke so that the girls would kiss her. Kitsu perked up at the last one knock. But all of those are good ideas thanks buddy, Naruto heard a cough behind him and when he turned around he saw the professor giving him a stare that told him to save those for later much later aa anyway I'm here for stealing from the bakery. As soon as he heard those words Ren's eyebrows rose up Naruto. We're here because Naruto claims that the bakery was giving him an unfair treatment, and he said you were a witness. I mean, I saw it, but I'm not sure if it excuses stealing. I resure you. He is going to pay for it, and he promised to never do it again, isn't that right Naruto? It was just a couple of things I'm sure they won't miss it again the professor gave him the stare I I mean, yes of course I promise. There you go, now tell me, what exactly happened? Well yesterday we were getting hungry and it was at the end of class so. And with that Naruto started to drift back to his memories, ignoring the other two. Yesterday, it was a beautiful day outside in the leaf city. Birds were singing, flowers were blooming, on days like these the kids like them, were burning in hell, also called physical education please someone tell me you got that reference. Come on, just two more laps guys, Uruka's voice came from behind them. At this point Naruto was struggling to catch up with the rest, usually he'd be at the front of the class only being rivaled by Kiba or Sasuke, but today they had two exams and they've been running and doing exercises for the past 30 minutes. So now he was with Shikamaru and Choji at the back of the group, usually this would make him mad but at this point he didn't care. Suddenly a silhouette passed him, huh, 
I thought we were the, the last ones who, but his thoughts stopped when he saw the familiar emo haircut and black eyes, he even saw that prideful smirk before he left, Sasuke. No way, he was behind me, if that's the case I can't let him win. With renewed strength he took a deep breath and started running like never before, he passed Choji and Shikamaru, he saw how Sasuke passed Kiba, who was at the front of class, and that motivated him even more, he passed Shino and the rest of the guys on his class he never talked with, getting right behind Kiba. The last lap, come on guys this is the last effort. Naruto was lucky because Kiba started to slow down, he supposed that being in the first place all this time tired him. Whatever the reason he dashed trough the last meters finally catching up with the other boy, Sasuke didn't even cast a glance towards him keeping his cool guy persona. Just right before the finish line he managed to get ahead just by a few feet. And that's it, good job everybody. Uruka was commentating something about the class but Naruto was too tired to listen, he was lying prone in the ground and breathing heavily and, as far as he could see the rest of the class was in a similar state so now it's time go home. When Naruto heard this he got up yeah in your face Sasuke, he couldn't believe he finally defeated him. Actually Naruto, Sasuke won Kiba said, Wah, be you but I was ahead of him, you saw that didn't you Uruka sensei. Yes Naruto I saw that but Sasuke was first the entire time, he was one lap ahead and finished first before everyone else, I told him to rest but he kept running. I still had some energy left so I didn't feel like resting said Sasuke with a tired but arrogant smirk. So, when he passed me he was actually lapping me, Naruto said with disbelief all that running I did was for nothing. Hey it wasn't for nothing, said Choji trying to be nice at least you didn't get lapped like the rest of us. Great now I'm being pitied by Choji things couldn't get worse, Naruto felt like this race reflected his school life, no matter how hard he tried it wasn't enough, it was never enough. And I always lose to him. Hey it's not that bad, you were in last and now you came in second in just one lap, that's amazing, said Aruka, trying to cheer him. Yeah but it doesn't matter because I'm second to him, he said pointing at Sasuke. You got a problem, moron. You damn emo. Okay that's enough, Naruto, Sasuke if you start fighting again I'm going to give detention to both. Alright everyone class is dismissed. Naruto left and started walking towards the gate, he didn't want to go change yet because Sasuke would probably be in there. He decided to walk around just to kill time, maybe he could go buy some food, but then some noises coming from a metallic fenced court nearby called his attention. When he got close he saw how the 5th graders were practicing Pokemon battle, they start at 1st grade in the academy when they are 8 years old, so the kids battling are 12. Wow that's so cool Naruto wasn't so used to seeing battles, since he was still on 3rd grade they only thought them the Teoric aspect, but next month they were going to start with combat practice and he couldn't wait. Ha are you lost again? He heard a familiar voice say. He trunned around to find a familiar pair of green eyes and a mischievous smile behind the metallic fence. Ren, Naruto exclaimed, smiling. Ren was actually Naruto's only friend if you didn't count Kitsu. Shikamaru and Choji were just guys he'd hang out with sometimes, Kiba was a jerk most of the time, Shino and Sasuke were just antisocials, and the girls couldn't care less about his existence. Shikamaru and Choji weren't mean to him like the other kids and he liked them for that but Shikamaru was way too lazy and Choji could be really lame sometimes, also none of them liked to join in his pranks. Ren was actually two years older than him and he was the coolest guy he knew, he was as smart as Shikamaru and athletic as Sasuke, but he wasn't popular like him. Most of the kids in his class didn't like him for whatever reason so he was an outcast like him, besides he liked to pull pranks with him as long as they were innocent enough and it doesn't involve getting detention. Hey buddy, are you skipping class? Nah we are done already, how is your class going? Did you win? Actually I haven't fought yet so I'm very nervous. It sounds like fun, can't wait for next month. I'm sure you'll love it, hey do you want to hang out today? This will take an hour but we can meet later. Sure sounds like fun. And then Hamaki sensei spotted them. Itsuki you're up next. Naruto I'm sure your class ended a while ago, go change. Meet me at the mall. Naruto nodded and left see you around. Time skip 15 minutes. Naruto exited the showers feeling way better. He was glad that everyone else left early, leaving the entire area for him alone. 
but when he left the school grounds he saw some of his classmates resting nearby, Kiba, Shikamaru and Choji. Damn Uruka was extra harsh today said Kiba resting on a bench a full two hours of physical training after a maths and history test, come on man. These things are going to become a drag when we add combat training to the schedule complained Sikamaru. Yep aren't you guys exited, exclaimed Naruto unintentionally scaring them. Holy shit Naruto, don't scare me like that, said Kiba while Choji fell backwards and Shikamaru barely moved. Ha, you need to watch your mouth before Uruka hears you and decides to wash your mouth with soap even if he didn't want to scare them, he found it really funny. You just need to mind your own damn business, Kiba yelled. Actually this was a big issue for him, because Aruka had already reprimanded him more than 10 times this month because of his bad language. Yeah yeah, so, what are you guys doing? We were just going to retrev our Pokemon from the daycare, and after that we were going to the arcade, wanna join? Choji asked after he got up. Sure if that's fine with you. He actually needed to take Kitsu and find a way to kill time before Ren ended his class. Shikamaru shrugged and gave him a thumbs up while Kiba mumbled something like just don't cause trouble, and they started going. Naruto smiled, maybe Ren could join their group, the other guys liked him, heck maybe this day wouldn't be so bad at all. They started walking towards the Pokemon daycare which luckily was only two blocks away from the school. Naruto started thinking about the other kids Pokemon. Since most of them belonged to clans they were allowed to have Pokemons before they got their license because their families were allowed to pay the fee and all of them had the type their clan specialized on. Choji had a Munchlax who liked to eat as much as him, Shikamaru owned a Shuppet who was calm and collected, and Kiba's Pokemon was a Growlithe who was Kitsu's friend, much to their trainer's annoyance. Naruto was certain that the main reason why the other kids hated him was because he had a Pokemon since clanless children couldn't have a Pokemon of their own unless their parents could manage to spend a lot of money so they envied him because when he got to the city the third champion paid the fees and filled the norms needed for him to keep Kitsu. Finally they reached the building, the old couple that managed the daycare were really nice and they were probably the only adults who didn't hate him, after they picked up their Pokemon they headed towards the arcade. Time skip two hours, ha, huh. take that you mutt, that's what you call a special attack, let me show you a special attack you moron. Guys can you let one of us play? Asked Ren you've been hoarding that game for 20 minutes, and I want to show Choji how to play. I don't like fighting games. They've been in the arcade for 2 hours already but it felt like 15 minutes, in fact Naruto was so distracted that he forgot about Ren. Thankfully the arcade was inside the mall and he told the rest about him, so when an hour passed Shikamaru remembered and went to fetch him. The place was more of a big play area that was incorporated on the left side of a mall that was four stories tall, it had a section downstairs for little kids with a bouncy castle and stuffed animals, then upstairs there was a place for teenagers with pool tables and a bowling, they were in the middle section with video games and tables of air hockey. Naruto was playing Pokken tournament with Kiba, and his Lucario was totally wrecking Kiba's Machamp. Here, take this. Kiba then proceeded to use a combo that Naruto never saw and finished him in one move. Hey that's cheating, hey, it's called skill. I'll show you skill, give me the rematch. Okay that's enough, Choji told me he wants to eat something and today is a discount day in the bakery nearby, so what do you guys think? Naruto was going to make a joke about Choji's appetite but he heard his own stomach rumble, he remembered that lunch was hours ago and he still had some money to waste. He looked towards the balcony where their Pokemon were. Shikamaru was making sure Choji's Munchlax didn't escape towards the food court. His Shepard and Ren's Swablu were napping together and he also saw how Kitsu was play NG with Akamaru, Kiba's Growlithe, so he called her with a whistle. Fine by me, Akamaru let's go. Choji could you please come here to control your Pokemon, asked Shikamaru angrily. Gobble it's just smelling the food, it's not his fault. I'll go wake up Sky and Gloom offered Ren, I don't have to tell you which is which right. They grabbed their things and left towards the bakery, at this time of the year few people were in the streets, outside of the bakery there was a wooden sign that read day 50% off. Wow that seems really generous commented Naruto. 
They also saw another sign outside that read no Pokemon allowed inside so Ren and Naruto decided to stay outside in order to watch the Pokemon. Naruto was afraid that Kitsu might want to take something, and because the store was filled with people who also wanted to take the offer. Even though they were outside and couldn't see them because of the shelves filled with numerous items, they could still hear the guys after they entered the store and they could also hear the owners, who were an old couple, and they were aw wing at how cute their friends were. The wife even asked if she could pinch Choji's cheeks and he complied just because he was polite when he returned rubbing his face Naruto was glad he stayed behind. Hey look at this you guys, they even gifted us a few slices of cake, Kiba said. Really? And only because you were such a cutie pies he said trying to copy the voice of the old lady to tease him. Kiba lunged at him and tried to hit him. Naruto got worried but when he saw how both laughed he realized he was only joking, so he tried to join the fun. Yeah, your pretty faces actually got us a good deal. Maybe you should try your luck with Ino now Akiba. It was a common gossip that he had a crush on the blonde. But the others weren't laughing. Kiba and Ren even stopped playing. All of them were looking at him, or rather past him. Naruto turned around and saw an old lady with a harpoon and gray hair. He assumed she was one of the owners but what was strange was her expression. She had her mouth open her eyes were wide as plates and they were looking right at Naruto. She was shaking from head to toe and mumbling strange noises. NN no it can't be, why here, why now, what do you want? Lady are you Oki? Okay? He asked and took a step towards her. Naruto was used to the stairs, the shoves, and the insults, but this woman looked like she might have a panic attack and pass out at any second. No, don't touch me, she screamed and fell backwards no no no, please don't hurt me. Hey what are you doing? Kiba yelled and ran towards Naruto pushing him aside, stay away from her. Wah, but I didn't do anything you saw it, I didn't saw shit, if you didn't touch her why is she on the ground? She fell obviously, hey what's happening here? The owner of the shop came to investigate all the shouting, when he saw his wife on the ground he rushed towards her shinan, what happened? Those whiskers, and those masks, she screamed in terror please don't take our daughter. Then the man shifted his attention towards them, probably to ask them what happened, then he saw Naruto and his expression changed from worried to furious. Naruto knew something was wrong when he heard the lady say whiskers, but now he was getting scared, the look of his face was the same one the people gave him, a cold stare with a frown and pure rage behind their eyes, like he did something unforgivable to them. You, he yelled what did you do to my wife? Naruto was too scared to talk but thankfully Shikamaru was quick to act. He didn't do nothing sir, she just fell backwards. Lies, it's the truth. Ren was quick to defend him we all saw it, she just started screaming and he didn't even touch her. Hey, don't lump me with you, Kiba protested. At this point people were starting to gather around them, they were curious about the crying and the shouting, and now they were whispering. Naruto gulped, he knew how this ended. They were going to blame him for everything, even if they didn't see what happened they'll just assume he was guilty. If you are going to defend him he started calming himself but he was still angry then give those back, you don't deserve them, he pointed towards Shikamaru who was holding the bag full with pastries they just bought. Shikamaru looked like he wanted to protest but he saw how angry he was in the crowd watching, so he shrugged and gave it to him. At least give us our money, Ren demanded. Naruto wasn't hearing their arguments, but rather the whispers that boy again always causing trouble and poor woman what did he do to her. It was too much, he cowed and take it, so he did what he was good at, he grabbed Kitsu and ran. Naruto, he heard his name but he didn't know who was calling him, and he didn't care. Hiruzen heard Ren's story and closed his eyes, a part of him was saying that he should have seen this coming, but how? Almost every adult in the village hated the tailed beasts and Naruto as an extension. Besides he couldn't blame Shinan either. That poor woman had an encounter with one Nine Tails member that left her scarred. She and her daughter were assaulted by some of those monsters and when her husband arrived they were trying to rape them. Thankfully he brought with him a skilled trainer that was able to defeat them but she ended up traumatized and her daughter was lost that day. And that was pretty much it Ren finished but I don't know what are we gonna do about it. That was a very good point, he could go and talk to the Unai couple in the bakery, but that would only treat the symptom not the illness. Naruto had brought up a very good point before, what should he do if he had another situation like these and he wasn't around?
Besides this involved pretty much everyone in the village. The only way to fully avoid to something like this happening again would be locking him up and he couldn't do that. He promised Naruto that he would have a normal life and living on isolation with permanent watch wasn't something he'd consider normal. Speaking of Naruto he was uncharacteristically quiet, Hiruzen looked at him and he was staring into the distance lost in thought. It was so rare that he snapped his fingers in front of his face to bring him back to reality. Huh, wah, you came back. Good now we need to talk about yesterday said Ren why did you run away, you know that made you look guilty right? I, I cowed and stand the people around us, they were looking at me as if I was a monster of some sorts. Naruto we need to go back to the bakery and talk to them. No, they'll react the same way, let me talk to them first, you two just wait until I tell you to enter, got it? Sounds good answered Ren, I don't know. Hiruzen kneeled in front of him we have to do this sooner or later you know it right. He nodded and they left to the bakery. Time skipped 10 minutes. When they reached the commercial district Hiruzen was contemplating why it had to be this hard, looking at the sky he groaned, despite raining this morning it was a lovely spring evening. The sun hadn't set completely yet but you could see the moon already, it wasn't cold but it wasn't hot either, it was a perfect night to go for a walk not to do this. They arrived at the entrance of the bakery. Thankfully it didn't have any customers and the streets were quite empty. You two wait here, don't come in until I tell you and then he looked at the Zorhua who was running around, chasing the Swablu look after your Pokemon, and don't get into trouble. Yes sir, they mumbled without enthusiasm. Hiruzen entered the store and the bell attached at the top at the glass door ringed a few times and he could hear and I'm coming from the back of the store, he waited there patiently and how saw the shelves were filled with several bread and a few pastries in them. After a few moments a middle-aged man with grey hairs and an harpoon appeared. Hi what can I give you, O oh Lord Third? Shin exclaimed with a look of surprise he hello, so nice to see you sir, it is possible that you are here to grab something sweet for little Konohamaru. Hello Shin, no I'm afraid that I'm not here to buy anything, I am here to discuss something of vital importance. Really? Finally someone from the town hall came here to do something about the Sneasel's problem. The Sneasel's problem, yeah those sneaky demons, they steal everything from the district. Sarutobi wasn't expecting this, and the knuckleheads from the Inazuka won't believe us because they don't perceive their scent he said angrily. Shin, and those bureaucrats from the town hall are worse, when I asked them to send in a real expert they just flooded me with paperwork. Hiruzen raised a hand and he stopped rambling. While I appreciate that you notified me about this trouble and I assure you that I will look at it, that's not why I'm here he took a deep breath, he wasn't looking forward to this I came to talk about Naruto. It was amazing how his demeanor changed so quickly, his eyes widened, his hands clenched until his knuckles turned white, and he started breathing heavily. Why? He sighed do you need to talk about that brat? You know why, he stole from you this morning, didn't he? Oh he visibly relaxed then I don't know why do you want to talk about it? If you captured him I'm sure that you would come up with a decent punishment, I leave that to your judgment ha. Huh? Hiruzen frowned, just a second ago he looked like a criminal who was caught and now he sounded extremely happy about this, besides he would never call Brad a boy, he loved children even the mischievous ones. He was getting annoyed at this. Let me assure you, Naruto will receive a punishment for his actions. But there's something else that I would like to discuss with you. Yes. Is it true that Naruto and his friends received unfair treatment from you? What? No. Well it's true that I refused to serve them, but only because he assaulted Shinon. I heard the story from Naruto's perspective and he never touched her Shin opened his mouth to protest but he was quicker and I checked with one of the kid that was there too. Come on Sarutobi, you've known me for years, why would you trust them instead of me? Exactly, I've known you for years, I know how much you suffered that day. I know how much you care about Shinon because of her trauma, and above all, I know about your grudge when he finished speaking Shin was red, he was breathing heavily and he was clenching his fists. If you know me so damn well he started you must understand why I did it, those monsters. They did unforgettable things to your wife and daughter. I know. He screamed but what has Naruto done to you, hem. He a ada, I get that from your perspective he attacked your wife, but the Thayer kids told you the truth and yet you still denied it, he took a deep breath trying to calm himself I can't really blame you for your reaction, it seems that Shannon had a relapse and suffered an attack, 
I will tell Naruto to avoid her in this place to make sure it doesn't happen again. Oh, th thank you. But still he continued it's not like this is the fist time it happens, along the years whenever she had a panic attack you would rush towards her and you would tell whoever was near her to not to worry it's not your fault, this happens to her all the time. I know that Naruto's air, facial fetus, may have been too much for her, but I think you overreacted. Sarutobi, please don't tell me it's for the same superstitious reason than everyone else. Those marks, you know he's one of them. One of them. He was a baby when it happened. Or worse, maybe he wasn't born yet. They didn't actually know about Naruto's birthday so he only could estimate his age. Those are a scars from a Pokemon, nothing else. That's a big coincidence. Enough. I'm sorry about screaming at you but I won't hear any more about this nonsense. This is what's going to happen. I will call Naruto and he will apologize to you and he will pay you back for the stolen goods. After that you will apologize at him and I will make sure he won't come near this building. That way everyone is satisfied and we won't discuss the subject anymore, are we clear? Yes Lord Third Shin said with a tired face. Good give me a moment and he exited the store to call Naruto. XXXXX. Five minutes ago, Ren. Okay I can hear them shouting. That's no good said Ren how long do you think is gonna take? But Naruto was ignoring him. The kid was unusually quiet and pensative. It was so weird to see him like this that Ren hoped they could find a solution. He sighed and looked around. This part of the city was unusually active despite the late hours. A group of children were running around trying to catch the bubbles that a war turtle was spitting into the air while its trainer watched. Two elderly women were having tea and gossiping near a big clock that showed him it was half past eight, and a teenage couple was walking around with their hands locked. He turned around and saw Sky flying away from Kitsu, who was trying to catch her. Then from the corner of his eyes he saw a shalut running and when he faced that direction he was able to see for a split second two round lavender eyes almost like pearls, watching them from the distance, well more specifically watching him. She's back at it again huh? He smiled, and looked at his friend I wonder when he will notice. Yesterday, what the hell was that? Kiba yelled. They were in a park now, not far away from the bakery after apologizing and leaving they followed Naruto there. Now this situation looked bad f for him. Currently Kiba was grabbing Naruto by his shirt and lifting him up. Shikamaru was rubbing his head and muttering something like how troublesome. Choji was looking at them sadly as if he wanted to say something but he was too shy to do it. As for Naruto he was unusually quiet and looking down with an empty expression. Would you please put him down and stop yelling? My head hurts unexpectedly. Shikamaru was the first one to defend Naruto. You want me to put him down? Put him down? He just hit an old lady and made her trip. No he didn't. She just triped on her own. What? No way you are defending him, you all saw that. Actually no Ren was getting tired of Kiba at this point so he decided to step closer to remind him how much taller he was we all saw how she started babbling stuff, and then she stepped backwards and fell on her own. B you but, look you said it yourself back there, you didn't see shit but we all saw it right guys. Shikamaru muttered a yep and Choji hesitantly nodded there you go, now let him go. Kiba reluctantly dropped Naruto who went inside one of the children's climbed areas with tubes and sat there cross-legged. Ren stepped away and sighed, he didn't want to get all scary but it was needed. He was glad that they put their Pokemons in their balls before, untrained Pokemon such as theirs were still young and susceptible to human emotions, so if they saw a tense moment such as this they will attack anyone out of stress. Currently the only ones outside of their Pokeballs were Kitsu and Gobble, Choji's Munchlax, the latter was holding Don the Zorhua with his weight because she wanted to go and help Naruto with Kiba. Luckily Ren thought of this before and asked for Choji's help, the last thing they needed today was an unsupervised battle between miners. Okay that's better, it still doesn't make sense, Kiba argued if Naruto didn't do anything to her why was she all scared. Ren gulped. He actually didn't have an explanation for this, while he had a few hypotheses none of them would satisfy Kiba himself. That was something he's been trying to understand for a while. Why would the adults treat his friend so badly? Sometimes it was justified since Naruto could be really annoying with his pranks, but most of the time it was unprovoked hate. She started screaming before Naruto approached unexpectedly, Shikamaru was the one to defend him. What? She started babbling and screamed before Naruto approached her. It wasn't something he did, 
but she was recalling something he explained. While you guys were busy fighting I saw how she came towards us and stopped as soon as she saw Naruto's face. My dad told me about it, it's called post-traumatic disorder, whenever something really bad happens to you. You'll get traumatized and sometimes after that whenever you remember what happened you become really scared and you can only think about that. My cousin has it sometimes after the war and it can get really depressing, I know that this isn't an accurate description, and if someone reading suffers from this I'm sorry if I offended you in any way but you'll have to understand that they are 10 years old, so I couldn't exactly copy and paste from Wikipedia and this was the best way that I could think. Wah! Ren looked at Shikamaru impressed. So, she was traumatized by Naruto and was recalling it. Are you kidding me? Nato's pranks are noting serious. Sure he might drop buckets of paint break some pots and vandalize walls, but he never physically hurts people, the most dangerous thing he has ever done is trying to ride on a wild girafarig and he was the one in danger. She mentioned her daughter Choji said and everyone looked at him, so he shrunk and started avoiding eye contact I wanted to say this before but when my family was by NG bread I asked her if she had kids and she told me that her died years ago, so it wasn't Naruto. Well at least we know that. After that they all fell in an uneasy silence, Shikamaru and Choji sat in the swings while Kiba muttered things under his breath, Naruo, for his part, kept unchiracteristically quiet. Ren sighed and when he turned back to apologize to Kiba he saw someone in the corner of his eye, he turned around to see a familiar girl hiding behind a statue. Oh it's just her, I was scared for a moment. Hey I'm sorry he said to Kiba after a while I shouldn't have done that, I wasn't thinking, are we cool? He looked at him for a while no worries man, we were all tense so don't worry then they shaked hands and he glanced towards Naruto one lat time it was fun, but I have to go, see you guys on Monday. Yeah my mom would kill me if I take any longer, I'm going too. Yeah I'm running late for dinner, it was fun guys, let's do it again another time. Yeah goodbye, with that they were left alone just the two of them and his friend stalker and Ren had lots of questions without answers, why did that woman act so scared of Naruto, hate was one thing but this was completely new. Why did they hate you? His friend gave him no answer. The present, Ren was brought back to reality when the champion called them, it seems he was stuck in his memories for a while, because most of the people from before were gone. Come on Naruto, you can get in, Ren I'll call you if you are needed, please watch over the Pokemon. Ren nodded and watched as Naruto clenched his fists before he got up. Good luck buddy, Hiruzen. Sarutobi watched the whole thing, and he admitted that Shin was holding in his anger really well. He apologized to Naruto and promised it won't happen again as long as Naruto behaved. Naruto agreed to that and he agreed it to pay whatever he stole with his allowance, and he offered some apologies from his side as well. Everything was going good and they were about to leave when... I'm sorry Naruto's voice came from behind him. When he turned around he saw Naruto's expression. Fully honest and at the brink of tears I'm sorry, about your wife, I'm really sorry. Ehh, uh, Shin was taken aback from this, he didn't expect it. Shin dear, who are you talking to? He could hear Shinan's voice coming from the background. Immediately Shin's eyes opened wide and his expression was terrified. You gotta go, now. But, now and with that Naruto ran away from the room, he followed him without saying goodbye. Outside he found Ren holding his swablu. Did you see Naruto? Yep he ran past me. Where to? Don't bother, at this point it's better to let him cool down. Are you sure about that? 100%. HMPH asterisk fine some may argue that he shouldn't follow a children's advice, but he knew Naruto more than anyone so Sarutobi trusted him. Say, Professor. Hmm. He was already on his way to his house, this has been a long day. I'm not saying this to criticize your decisions or anything, but I have a question, why did you put Naruto here? What? Now I'm not complaining, I really like the moron but when you rescued him why did you bring him here, why not anywhere else? What kind of question is that? I did it so I could look after him. Really? Because you can't watch him all the time, and it's not like you adopt him or anything. Ren I'm really tired and your questions don't make sense, I'm going home and with that he started walking again, he would never discuss this with a child. It does make sense, after all this is the only place where the Nine Tails attacked and they released Heatran right here. He stopped immediately, how? 
What are you talking about? He said, hoping he will drop it. Come on, stop that. You know what I'm talking about. How do you know that? Let's just say that the librarians need to put more security in the restricted section. You shouldn't have done that. Come on. After I watched how people treat my friend I grew curious, no one could give me answers so I looked for them on my own. Still what you did was wrong, you shouldn't dig into that part of Naruto's past. Oh I wasn't there for Naruto he said smirking I was just there to find stuff about my family, I just found that information on accident. Your family, you know what I'm talking about, everybody knows except me, do you know how frustrating that is? The fact that everyone knows your own past better than you. Ren. The things about your family, we needed to do it for a reason, I never liked it but it was better than the alternative this was a really long day. I don't judge you I and don't wanna antagonize you but you need to understand why did I do it he said with a sad look and besides you have to consider my father. Ah, yes your father Sarutobi said scowling. Exactly, so I investigated and I found that, it makes a lot of sense now, but my question still remains. Why did you keep Naruto here? This is the only place where they attacked, so everyone here resents him, why didn't you put him for adoption somewhere else in the country that wasn't affected? Hiruzen smiled, he is way too clever for his age that could have worked, but you have to remember, many famous elite trayers lost their lives that day, leaving mourning fans, friends, and family everywhere in the country and if one of them saw Naruto they might act out of spite, it's better if I keep him here where I can watch him. Ren just looked at him for a moment if you say so, and then he left. Sarutobi stood there alone with his thoughts, smiling, he is too smart, I wonder how he's going to be when he grows up. The answer to your question is really simple Ren. He can't be away from me even if the town hates him, Beckhouse if he does that he won't be able to have a normal life, because he has Heatran sealed inside him, alright only these ones left, you can leave as soon as you finish cleaning these Aruka said cheerfully. Right. Hurray said Naruto sarcastically as Aruka and his combuskin each dropped two huge pile of dirty plates for him to wash. After all that happened with the bakery the old man betrayed him by telling Aruka, who was expected was pissed off, but at least the champion told him to go easy on him once he explained him why did he do that, so instead of cleaning the toilets of the police station like he was threatened he was cleaning some of the dishes and the utensils from the academy. His mind started to wonder while he grabbed a spoon to wash. The accident happened on Friday and he stole on the Saturday. Now it was Monday and he waited for his punishment the entire day. When he entered he believed Aruka was just going to yell at him right there but he didn't. Later in class each time he opened his mouth or looked on his general direction he thought oh man this is it, he is gonna scold me in front of everyone and embarrass me but it did not happen. He was getting some hope but when the classes ended he was stopped by him and led to the kitchen, there when he told him what his punishment would be the lunch ladies were fucking delighted. Hey! Naruto yelled when he felt water being sprayed at his face what was that for? He looked and saw Aruka's Pokemon near him, he didn't know if Vaporeons were able to hold their laughter but this one sure tried. You have been scrubbing that spoon while dazing in the distance for 5 minutes, I think it's clean enough. Oh, okay. You know I think it would be much more effective if he did the cleaning, he has to know a water attack that would be useful for this you know. Yeah sure he has one, but you are the one being punished so he can't help you. Fiend, come on Naruto don't you want to get home? It's not like I got someone waiting for me there you know. Well, at least you don't have dirty dishes there Aruka was trying to be funny to ease the awkwardness, but it wasn't working. Naruto glared at him and continued working in silence. Eventually he finished and slumped on a seat, he would have slept there if it wasn't for Aruka who woke him up, asked to wash his face and prepared him something to eat, after he was done he offered to escort Naruto to his house. When he stepped outside he shivered from the cold, it wasn't dark yet but it was a windy afternoon, the sun was already setting making the shadows elongate with a strong wind that reminded him that they were on autumn already. He could hear the noises the janitors made while they prepared the school for the next day. When he exited the school grounds he was able to see some closing supermarkets and a nearby park was full with children with their parents and some Pokemon, apart from that the entire street was empty, well except from one person. Ren, yo how's it going, he was leaning against one of the school gates in his usual blue clothed attire, near him his cloudy Pokemon played with Naruto's Zorhua. Kitsu, Naruto exclaimed at seeing his Pokemon, 
The fox Pokemon stopped her game to turn around and run towards her master exited. I didn't think I'd see you here at Suki, did you wait for him this whole time? Nah I'm not that dependent of him he nodded toward Naruto who was being licked by Kitsu I just had some errands to do before getting Sky and I saw Kitsu at the Pokemon daycare, I didn't know how long you would take so I thought of taking her here. Thanks bud, hey I know, he turned to Aruka why don't Ren accompany me so you can go home. Are you sure, would that bother you Ren? Naruto turned around and gave Ren the eyes of please save me I don't want to hear more lectures and he laughed. No problem it's okay I wanted to take a walk anyway. Okay well in that case come on Combuskin, Vaporeon, we can still do our daily training. They started jogging and left, while Naruto and Ren started their long way towards Naruto's house alongside their Pokemon who were chasing each other. The shul grounds were a green area in the middle of the urban part of the city and Naruto's house was on the rural part, so the landscape around them changed constantly as they walked. In the meantime Naruto was describing his punishment to Ren and complaining about Uruka all the way, while he was just nodding at everything the blonde said. Finally the tall buildings gave way to the smaller houses, the urbanistic design became more rustic with more trees in the sidewalks, and when they were really near Naruto's house Ren stopped abruptly ending the rant. So what if I threw a chalk piece towards Sasuke? That jerk deserved it, huh? He turned around to see his friend with his eyes closed and breathing heavily are you okay? Naruto did Shikamaru, Choji or Kiba tell you something today, did they treat you differently? Uuh, I mean Kiba was a jerk before but now it's worse the teacher had to separate them earlier in class but other than that Shikamaru and Choji are cool, they still talk to me. That's, good, you know you should invite them more often they seem really cool, and we had a good time with them last time. Well maybe sometimes, but I don't see why I shouldn't just hang out with you he said shrugging. Asterisk sigh look Naruto I think it would be better if you started to bond with people other than me, I, may not be available for you in the future. Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Asterisk inhale you are aware that I'm older than you right, he said this with his eyes closed. Yeah you are 12 and I'm 10, so what about it? And do you know that people my age graduate right? Oh, yeah and you do know what will happen when I graduate right? You will obtain a rookie license. He knew that this wasn't what Ren was talking about, but at this point he was on denial. Yeah and also I will have my sensei, who will take me and another two of my classmates to travel with him, that's why I wanted to talk with you, I won't be around for a while. But why? Naruto was devastated are you going now? No no, the graduation ceremony will be on April, that's when the teams are made, we are still on November we have time. Yeah right a few months and then you will leave for more than a year. Naruto why are you acting so surprised? You knew that this was going to happen I know you don't pay attention in class but you were always talking about how you can't wait until you are 12 to get out of here. Yeah I know about that, and I knew that you were older it's just that I never made the connection, I always thought that we were going to be on the same team, I never thought about our age difference. Well now you know how it is, are you mad? I don't know, but hey I heard that some people travel when they are older, maybe you can. No, Naruto I want to leave this place as much as you do, asking me to stay for two more years would be like torture for me, I, I have troubles with my family and being a trainer is my way out of them. Well at least you have a family, if you stayed here you could be with them and work things out, but if you leave I'm alone. Are you, how could you say that, don't you remember what I told you about them? I'm sorry if I don't remember every single word you said to me. Wow, you really are dumb. That hurt Naruto, he's been called dumb so many times that it didn't matter to him anymore, but hearing from Ren one of the five people that actually cared about him made Naruto feel sick. Wait, why would you say that? If you can't bother to remember there's no point Ren was already leaving to his home. Wait, remember what? There's a reason why I don't want to stay here. What? Did your father forgot to give your money allowance this month? Just get over it. Naruto usually didn't mess around with others' families, but he was hurt. When Ren turned around he had a tear on his face, before Naruto could say anything he just left. Naruto was left with the regret of saying those words, and feeling really stupid. He should have seen this coming, he knew that this was going to happen, but like many things in his life he just didn't thought about it and he just put it aside like a chore. 
Both of them knew it but never talked about it during their games, their pranks, their times hanging out, they just ignored it and went on with their daily lives. Asterisk Sai lets go to home Kitsu. Time skip one day. Naruto had a bad day, all the time he was thinking about what had happened yesterday, he couldn't focus at all and to make things worse now Kitsu was mad at him. He didn't know how much she could understand about human language but apparently she knew enough to see how stupid he was, Ren was her friend also so she probably didn't like that he screamed at him. After another disappointing day of being beaten by Sasuke he was ready to pick up Kitsu from the daycare and do nothing for the rest of the day, seriously he was too tired to even pull a prank, maybe he could read a comic. But all of his thoughts about future plans went away when he saw the face of the old lady, she was with an expression of pity and Naruto didn't like that. Naruto, what's wrong old lady, is Kitsu alright? Naruto interrupted. Oh she is fine but I was going to ask you something, you see she is always eager to leave to you but today she refused and we had to force her to leave the playing room, did something happen? Oh great she is mad at me again, the last time that happened she transformed into me and got in a lot of trouble so I could be blamed, now what do I do? He looked over the woman waiting for an answer and he thought that if she was able to handle the daycare she might be able to help him I got nothing to lose so I might as well try. Eehm yeah, Kitsu is mad at me for something, she usually isn't mad at all so I don't know what to do to calm her down, and she usually does really bad stuff when she is angry. Oh, and why is she mad at you? Last time I checked the two of you were really bonded. Uuhm, Naruto didn't want to tell his personal life to a stranger, but she was always good to him and she wanted to help I argued with a friend of ours, it's pretty bad and I guess she didn't like that. Oh. Well I'm sure that she is just looking after you. Looking after me? What do you mean? Naruto Pokemon are very intuitive creatures especially with their trainer. Kitsu in particular is really intelligent I remember the first time you bought her here she managed to outmaneuver and escape the employees five times before you calmed her down Naruto chuckled at the memory. If she noticed that you got into a fight with one of your friends she might worry because because she can see you don't have many of those Naruto understood that she was thinking about the nine tails and she cares about you, so maybe she wants you to make amends with him. I understand, can I see her? The woman nuded and took him inside. XXXXX. Kitsu come on I know that I messed up, just give me a chance. The fox Pokemon was curled inside an empty log in the play area of the daycare yard, the lady took him there and told him that she was going to leave him alone. She still needed to take care of other business, she only asked him to let her know when he left. Look I know that I was a jerk yesterday, but you gotta work with me, there is nothing I can do now. Kitsu turned around slightly to face him and opened one of her eyes, he swore she was trying to tell him. Are you sure that there's nothing? Yeah what do you mean? You know what I'm talking about. Well I could go to apologize to Ren but, uh he realized she was just talking about that well I could but it's not that simple. Why not? It's just. Gah, fine I'll try to do it. He looked at Kitsu and Sigd, he knew he should do that so he nodded and invited her to follow him with a movement of his hand. They walked together to the exit and waved at the old lady who was busy with other clients, it wasn't until they were outside when Naruto realized something. Wait, did we just talk? As in hold a conversation, with my Pokemon. He looked at Kitsu who had a mischievous grin. XXXXXX. They arrived on the same park he and the professor found Ren a couple of days earlier, luckily for him the park was almost empty except a few kids and their moms playing on the sandbox. Kitsu lead him eagerly towards the spot Ren usually is, and sure enough after a couple minutes looking they found him reading under a shadow again. Kitsu went behind him and nudged him as an encouragement, but he couldn't move because he didn't know what to say, he still believed that it would be better if he just patched things up with his family and he still didn't remember what was he referring to last night, even after thinking it over the night. Hey wait, can we just try it other day, I don't know what to say. But Kitsu had enough, just as she heard those words she sprinted away from him. What? No wait and he started chasing after her. Time skipped 5 minutes, Naruto had been chasing after his Zorua for a few blocks, until she turned into a corner and he never saw her, he was calling her without any hope. Ehmmm she, she went over there, he heard a quiet voice say. Naruto turned around and he saw one of his classmates and one of the shyest people he knew, Hanada. 
Hanada was a weird girl but in a good way, they were on the same class, she was a good student and kind to the rest, but she was really quiet and you needed her to repeat her words three times to understand her. Usually she was bullied by the other girls because of her eyes but she did nothing to stop them, and she was part of a clan so she had a Riolu with her despite not being over age yet. Oh hi Hanada, sorry but I'm kinda busy right now and just like that he went past her. I, I said that I saw your Zorhua and I know which direction went. Wait, really, uh huh, can you, show me, Naruto wasn't sure how to proceed. If, if you want I could come with you and help. Wait, so you actually want to help me? The girl just nodded and Naruto didn't know what to do with that to do in this situation. Girls usually hated his guts not only for his pranks but also because of his semi-rivalry with Sasuke, but on the other hand she wasn't like the other girls at all and she even was polite toward him, besides this could be the only lead he had on Kitsu. Alright, lead the way. It's over here she pointed towards an alleyway but Naruto noticed something, they were at the entrance of a temple that looked familiar, after a while pondering he had a realization. Wait, it was here. This place, it can't be he sighed and wondered why did that woman thought it was fine to leave him alone in here she knew he barely explored the city yet to its fullest. Asterisk sigh why don't you go play over there darling, I will buy some things here and I will meet you in our building he mocked her one would think that you are trying to get rid of me. Naruto stood on a wide street of a residential area, it was full of houses that looked the same to him and since it was Monday no one was around. He decided to keep exploring until he found something remarkably different to at least use as a landmark. He would never understand how people don't get lost in this place, all houses looked the same, at least in this part of town every street was the same, and since this was a residential part of town there were no businesses or shops to differentiate the places. But apparently everyone could manage themselves because they could read the street signs. Bah, so what if I don't know how to read? I didn't need that thing before. He kept wandering aimlessly, he considered asking some people but people here were mean to him sometimes so he decided not to risk it. He was about to give up when he found something different, there was a building bigger than most houses and it was made with a different material, it looked way older and it had towers of bricks. What is this place? It seems important, Ba never mind but at least I can use it to guide me. He was thinking on how he was going to get back to his home when he heard sobbing, at first it was so faint that he thought he maybe had imagined it, but as he got closer to the entrance to the strange building the sound got louder. He turned around a corner and saw someone was crying curled up into a ball on the entrance. He got near to see better and he found out it was a boy near his age, he had pale skin brown hair and he was dressed in blue clothes. Hey, are you okay? He asked without knowing how to approach him. Leave, go away, um, sorry if I'm upsetting you or something but I'm lost, so could you perhaps tell me where do I need to go, then I will leave you. He turned around to face and he saw his green teary eyes and snooted nose, he looked like he was around his age. Asterisk sniff who are you? Um I'm Naruto hi, sorry for interrupting, anyway why are you crying here? Wa, what do you want? He said angrily, I told you I'm lost. I need to find my way back home and you are the only person here Sue. Sniff asterisk where do you live? Uh, Executor Street 1344. Meh fine, I can take you there with that he dusted his pants, cleaned his face and got up this way. Five minutes later, it actually wasn't that far away, they just had to make some weird turns Naruto still hated this city but they were finally arrived. They actually weren't at Naruto's home yet but they were at a nearby park. Oh. We're here, thanks for you UMMM. Yeah whatever he started to walk away. Hey, I usually don't do this, but why were you crying? Why do you care? It's not like we know each other. I know but, he actually had no idea why was he asking this, he usually never meddle with anyone's life, but something about watching this boy cry made him worry do you wanna play? What? He said confused. Yeah, Naruto said while pointing at the park. Oh well fine, but don't mention what you saw earlier okay? Sure, an hour and a half later. They played a lot and forgot the time, the boy who Naruto learned was called Ren, actually was a lot of fun. For a while he was still grumpy and sad, but after they started climbing on the games he cheered up and after Naruto fell he began laughing. After the hours passed Naruto started to worry, 
the woman that was taking care of him might not like him but the old man might get mad if he just ignores her for too long. So, Yuum it was fun but I have to go now, people are probably looking for me. Ooh, yeah, up until this point the kid was smiling carelessly but suddenly he turned serious I should go too. Naruto saw him start walking and he doesn't know why but he is worried about this kid and he doesn't know why, like he usually doesn't care about other people, no one cares about him, so why should he care about others? But the thing is that he just couldn't look at him being all sad. Hey, he called the kid who was leaving I know it's not my business and you told me to not bring it up, but why were you crying? He stopped and tensed his shoulders, so Naruto was quick to add I'm sorry if this offends you but. My father hit me he said out of the blue it wasn't the first time he did but this time my mother saw him do it now, all this time I thought that she would side with me but after she saw it she shrugged and told me that I probably deserve it. Naruto flinched, he heard and saw parents being strict to their child regularly with many being somewhat aggressive, in fact that was one of the things that made him happy with his situation but this was something else. I, oh well, I hope you feel better. Ha, huh, you are not good at this right. Ehh no, listen I don't know what to say other than your dad is a douche and you probably should escape from home or something. Wah, but I have nowhere else to go. Oh yes that, ah what was that old man told me the other day. He said closing his eyes trying to remember Naruto if you ever have trouble and you can't find me go to the town hall. There's a department in there that's called children protection, they will help you he said imitating Sarutobi's voice do you think that you can try that? No. My father is a really famous trainer, most times he calls favors to people, the other day he pushed me into the ground a lot of times with people nearby, and they did nothing. Well, crap I'm out of ideas he stood there silently with his eyes closed for a minute, then he suddenly jumped, scaring the other boy I got it. Are you in the trainer's academy? E.E.H. You know the place when people go to learn how to be a trainer Naruto was actually going there the next semester not only because he has nothing to do but also because he needed to graduate there in order to keep having kitsu. Yes, I'm in my second year. What about it? Do you know what happens when you graduate? Eeh, you get a Pokemon. Yeah, and also you get to travel. Wouldn't that help you? Uh, I never thought of that, but it will take me another two years to have a chance at graduating. Besides I don't think my father would want me to leave. Screw your father. If he is as you told me then you don't have to listen to him, so maybe you can wait, and hey. Maybe I can get the old man to help you. The old man, Naruto. The boys turned around and saw a middle-aged woman in a dress with a shopping bag full of groceries, she had her hands on her hips and an angry look on her face. There you are, young man. I've been looking for you. Didn't I tell you to be at home? You left me in a place I've never been. I've got lost. Do you think I'm stupid? I don't care for your excuses as she said that she grabbed Naruto's hand with a strong grip now let's go before the Lord Third asks about you. Ach, hey not so rough. Then he turned around to the boy think about what I said. Flash forward, the present. Ren came the next day to his house and told him that he agreed and he was going to graduate in order to leave his house, after that they became friends. Over the time Naruto just took Ren for granted and simply forgot about how they met. Damn this is where I met him, I'm a horrible friend what is wrong with me? He said while covering his face with his hands and kneeling down no wonder he is mad. He was so distracted with his thoughts that when he felt a hand on his shoulder he recoiled in fear. Ha, huh, what was, he looked up and saw Hanada with her hands up and a worried glance what was that for ha, huh? he said irritated. U-U-M. I'm sorry if I scared you, B but you looked troubled by something and when you didn't answer my question I got worried so, she looked away in embarrassment. Asterisk sigh it's okay, what did you ask seriously this girl was so shy that he could knock her up by blowing on her direction. Oh, the last time I saw her was in that direction and she pointed towards an alleyway. Great said Naruto getting tired, then he looked at her weird question but what were you doing here? Ah I'm helping you find your Pokemon. Ah Naruto facepalm no I mean, what were you doing here before it was really suspicious of her to just be passing by at this place and time. Ehmm, I just bought some groceries for my family in this area she was getting redder and redder. Okay, then why are you helping me then? It's not like we are friends or anything. Eh, hey, because, it's the right thing to do. 
Sure Naruto just looked at her with disbelief listen if you are here for a bed or a dare. Oh, no no no, I just wanted to help you, I, I will leave if you want to but I'm here because it's not good for a Pokemon to be alone in the city. Asterisk sigh yeah probably but there's no way we'll catch her, if she sees me she would just transform into something else and flee. Maybe, or maybe we can lure her in. How, when was the last time she ate? Time skip, 10 minutes later. Kitsu's P. O. V. Stupid Naruto Kitsu thought why does he have to be like this? The fox Pokemon was actually sprinting through the roofs, she learned to stay here when she was alone because humans didn't like her, people thought that she was just distracting them from one of Naruto's pranks about to happen, even when she transformed into a human they would notice eventually, something about not covering her chest with clothes. Why is it so hard to just apologize? Ren is the only human that seems to care about something else than themselves. Well he and that round boy anyway, I have to make them talk somehow. She was distracted by the rumbling of her belly. She realized it had been hours since she was fed in the daycare awe. I can't think when I'm hungry. I better grab something. She started searching for any market or restaurant to steal from. But looking around she noticed that this was just mainly a residential area with no food nearby. She sighed. Even after four years after they moved to this place she wasn't used to the town, she looked at the sky I miss you, mama. But a smell interrupted her thoughts, it was a sweet scent that made her mouth water. She turned around following her nose, the smell came from an alley below her so she dropped from her roof and looked to the sides to see if there was any human around, it was empty and the smell was coming from an open bag on a bench. Ha, huh. these humans need to learn to not leave their food alone. When she was about to eat the first bite of whatever was inside she was tackled by someone she didn't see, they hit the ground and she felt two furred hands grab her from behind pinning her to the ground. I'm sorry she heard someone say and she knew it was a Pokemon, but most importantly she smelled another familiar scent. Time skip 5 minutes, Naruto's P. O. V. Come on Kitsu I said I'm sorry, repeated Naruto for an eleventh time. They were in the same alley where they set the trap. At first Naruto didn't think it would work but Hinata surprised him, she told him that the Oran spice really attracted Pokemon. He was able to spot Kitsu at a distant roof so they chose to set up nearby, at first Naruto was worried that she would smell them from a distance, but Hinata told him that the food smell would cover them, after that they hid themselves behind cardboard boxes. Finally when Kitsu was getting near he realized that they didn't know what to do next so panicking he asked her to use her Pokemon and Hinata released her meta to restrain Kitsu. Naruto should have known that she will get offended by that, so after she was released she ran towards a cardboard box and locked herself there. Hinata for her part was red with embarrassment and was bowing to his Pokemon in the ground and urging the meta to the same. Asterisk Sai Kitsu I'm going to talk to Ren and apologize. The furry Pokemon until now was curled into a ball, whimpering with her eyes closed, but now she opened an eye and looked at him, Naruto could tell it wasn't just about his fight with Ren, but since they managed to ambush her, her pride was hurt. From his peripheral vision he could see Hinata standing up and looking at him weirdly, probable because she heard the Ren part. Yes I know now what I did wrong and I'm going to apologize, also I'm sorry about all of this but it was the only way to find you. He kneeled down and tried to reach his hand to her happy. Kitsu slowly reached for his hand and licked it slowly, but then she looked past him and then went inside the cardboard box again. Naruto looked back to find that Hinata and her Pokemon had come really close to him in order to hear, but the problem was that she was almost touching him. Woo ah, eep, I'm sorry. Naruto tried to back away but tripped and kicked Hinata on her leg who jumped away in order to not go down. He landed on top of the cardboard box Kitsu was in, crushing it and hitting his head in the process, fortunately his Pokemon stepped aside before that. Now Kitsu was growling at Hinata and her medit was mad at him for kicking his trainer, meanwhile she returned her routine to apologize 20 times. Ouch, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, it's okay I'm sorry for hitting you, Kitsu back off he told off to his Pokemon who ran towards him, their previous fight forgotten don't worry I'm up, Hinata it's okay. No it's not, I. She was cut off when he stood up and grabbed her shoulder seriously what happened to this girl to be like this. People at her house should be very strict he then bowed down at the medit and her as an apology. Thank you Hinata he said seriously letting her shoulder go without you or your Pokemon I wouldn't have found Kitsu. 
Irg Shi looked like she couldn't articulate words so he turned around to leave. Wait Naruto, hum, what he turned around to face her. You said that you wanted to apologize to Ren, why? Oh he hoped she didn't hear that well, we had a stupid fight. About what? If you don't mind me asking of course. Ehh he thought about it and decided that she earned his trust he is going to graduate in some months. I told him to not go to travel and to stay here instead, because I would miss him if he left. Oh and, does he want to leave? Why yeah, I can't tell you why but he is pretty desperate. Um well if it's really important to him you should apologize really she paused and looked at him more clearly I if you wanted to, I could come with you. Naruto just looked at her confused, on one hand she was always nice to him and she just helped him, on the other hand she had no reason to do it, they weren't friends and she could be really weird sometimes. Thinking a little bit he decided to give her a chance. Oki okay, here's the deal, if Kitsu accepts you, you can come. Oh really? She sounded excited. Yep for real, Kitsu is my best friend and advisor, she gets to decide many things. The Pokemon in question was looking at the girl angrily, or more specific to her Pokemon who was behind her, she was still mad at the medit that pinned her and she wasn't used to Naruto getting along with people other than his male classmates, it made her jealous. Yuum Kitsu listen Naku here is sorry about what happened and she searched her purse and grabbed a Pokeball, and used it to put her medit away and I'm sorry too, so would you forgive us if I gave you this? She asked while offering the food they used as bait with the spice Pokemon like these are my lunch leftovers, I know it's not much, but I hope you like chicken. Kitsu immediately dashed towards it and finished it up in four bites, when she was done Kitsu rubbed her body against Hinata's leg. Well that means she likes you so let's go. Together they left towards Ren's favorite reading spot in the park, while walking Hinata tried to release her medit but Naruto told her to keep him inside a Pokeball because Kitsu was still mad at him. Time skip. 20 minutes. Ren's P. O. V. Ren was reading to distract himself from yesterday. He didn't want to be mad at Naruto but the boy made it hard sometimes, but what was he supposed to do? His father was an ass like always, well at least he was behaving better now since he learned that if he just leaves Ren alone it would be easier for both. But there were times when they couldn't stay apart especially when they were having dinner, and then they clashed. His father wasn't the alcoholic he was when Ren was a little kid but that didn't mean they were on good terms. Ren sighed and closed his book, he really didn't want to be angry at Naruto but if he still insisted with him staying then he had no other choice, only five more months and he'll be free. Um, hey, he looked up from his reading and saw Naruto looking awkward, he had his hand behind his head and was avoiding looking at him in the eyes while he shifted his way from one foot to another. This took Ren by surprise, he wasn't expecting anything from him or at least not so soon. Naruto, wa, what are you doing here? Asterisk Sai Oki, came to apologize, I know what I did was bad and, I'm sorry. They stood there in silence for a while, Ren was actually surprised since he never thought Naruto would be capable of doing that in a hundred years, the blonde boy for his part was expecting an answer. Did you truly mean that? Ah come on Ren I've already said it. I'm waiting for an answer. Fine, yes I behaved like an ass back there. And what are you going to do with our age gap thingy? Nothing he shrugged with his hands on his pockets because there's nothing I can do, I'm not like Shikamaru who was offered to skip courses a few weeks back, in fact I'm actually behind the rest, and I'm not gonna force you to stay after what you told me about your family. You remembered, he said smiling. Yeah it took me a while but I'm sorry I forgot. It's weird because that's the reason we know each other but we never talked about it ever. Yes I suppose. Su so what now Naruto said after moments of silence are we good or you hate me? We are good Ren said smiling and getting up but seriously don't behave like that again or I'll hit you again. Again? Naruto asked and in order to demonstrate Ren punched him on the shoulder. After the initial surprise he hit Ren to retaliate and that escalated into a full fight but they weren't fighting seriously, those were soft punches to lighten up the mood while they laughed. Hey wait a minute Ren said after a while where's Kitsu did you left her in daycare again. No but that reminds me of something wait here, and he left towards some bushes. Ren just stood there with a dumb expression, his Swablu Sky who was perched on a branch from a nearby tree came down to see what was going on it's okay girl me and Naruto worked things out the Pokemon chirped happily, 
it was unusual to see her so close to the ground since every time she comes near the little children harries her into playing. Hey here, he heard Naruto coming from behind him with someone else Ren this is my classmate Hinata, she helped me before and gave me advice about you. Now this was something interesting, the girl in question was wearing a grey hoodie and blue trousers, she was twirling her fingers and kind of using Naruto as a cover, her short bluish hair and her pale skin gave her an unusual look. But even though Ren was sure he never actually saw the girl face to face there was something in her he could never forget, in all the times he managed to catch a glimpse of her when he and Naruto were alone there was only one thing he saw, those violet pearl eyes. Oh really? Ren said while a wicked grin formed on his face it's a pleasure to meet you then, you know not many people would have the patience to deal with his loud mouth I congratulate you. Hey, Naruto complained, E, it's not that bad she said while shrinking further away he is really nice in classes so I was just being polite. Nah you are being humble at this point he was trying to memorize everything from her appearance, the most shocking detail was the Hyuga crest on her hoodie she must branch house member say your face seems familiar have we met before, he asked just to tease her. Uh, no, this is the first time we met, she said blushing. Gotcha, well anyway if you are good with Naruto that means you are good to me Ren turned to face his friend so now that we are all clear though you want to go have fun somewhere, if we only have 5 months we might just take advantage of them. Oh yeah that's cool, he turned around and saw that the girl was avoiding his gaze and she was slowly drifting away. Hey Hanada do you want to come? he heard Naruto ask. Wah, but I I don't think I should, she looked like someone told her she had to battle against the newest champion. Do you have a curfew? Are people waiting for you at home? Oh no I'm not expected in another couple hours but, then come, we promise there won't be any vandalism involved Ren assured and then look at Naruto. Okay fine no pranks I promise. Well see we won't get you in any troubles, now what do you want to do? Her eyes lit up. I always wanted to try some sweets from a shop nearby. Thanks. 